Summarizing the standard in a few headlines reveals the following basics. The overall goal of the standard is to identify, implement, verify and maintain risk control measures to reduce to an acceptable level the risk associated with medical devices. Working towards this goal, the following order of risk reduction priority should be followed. First, try to make your device as inherently safe as possible. Ideally, your device just can't fail. Second, as necessary, introduce protective measures to your device. For example, add an alarm function to warn in case of significant air leakage when using an emergency ventilator. Protective measures also should be taken as part of your manufacturing process, for example, in ensuring that electrical connections within your device cannot be connected the wrong way. And third, don't forget to provide information for safety in your instructions for use to help ensure the safe use of your device. As you can see, the standard doesn't ask that all risks should be reduced to zero. The bottom line is that medical benefits related to the intended use of your device should outweigh the residual risks. Here's some more basic information about the ISO 14971 standard. It's good to know that it is accepted by the European Union as well as the FDA. In Europe, the EN ISO 14971-2007 is accepted as a harmonized standard, so an accepted way to meet the risk management requirements is contained by the medical device directives, which include the MDD, AIMD, and IVD. It also is an FDA-recognized standard. It's doubly worthwhile to follow this standard if you are dealing with European as well as U.S. medical device regulations. The standard, in short, provides risk management processes and possible techniques and checklists to be used as part of the process. However, it does not provide any mandatory risk acceptability levels.